Good afternoon, everyone. I am your speaker for this evening. For those who don't know, my name is Dea Renee LeBlanc. <clears throat> Tonight, I want to ask a question. What is your mouth filled with? Is it filled with life or is it filled with death? We're going to be talking about the power of the tongue, which is a dangerous, dangerous weapon. Coming from Proverbs, the 18th chapter and the 21st verse. It is a familiar scripture. I'll give you a minute to get there. <coughs> okay. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's our scripture. Now, what does your heart feel with? It all depends on what's filling your heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A critical heart produces a critical tongue. A self-righteous heart produces a judgmental tongue. A bitter heart produces a bitter tongue. An ungrateful heart produces a grumbling tongue. But a loving heart produces a gracious tongue. A faithful heart produces a truthful tongue. And a peaceful heart produces a reconciling tongue. A trusting heart produces an encouraged tongue. What type of tongue do you have? <clears throat> Words have great power to bless and curse. Jesus said that a man is not made unclean by what goes into his mouth, but what comes out of his mouth. And you can find that in Matthew 15 and 11. Matter of fact, let me go there. I had it a few minutes ago. Lauren found it and marked it, and I didn't keep it. Sorry, Lauren. 15 and 11 says, Now that which goes into the mouth defile it, defile it a man. Not that which goes into the mouth defile it a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this, is, this defile it a man. James said, whosoever can control his tongue can be perfect in every way. According to this proverb, one should take care to watch his or her words carefully and to be slow to speak. Understand the power of speech. There is life and death in words. If you love to talk, you will eat the fruit of your words. If you love to talk, you will eat the fruit of your words. Perhaps you know the phrase, he will be eating his words. You can condemn us. This is why when someone is arrested, you have the right to remain silent. And when you are on trial, you have the right to plead the Fifth Amendment. If you have a habit of losing control of your tongue, whatever it is to do, whether it's curse, gossip, brag, lie, or anything unseemingly, as the Lord asks the Lord to help you be silent. You will eat the fruit of your tongue, bitter or sweet. So just because when you're watching your tongue, when you're watching what people say, when you are responding, because we as people, when someone is talking to us, we're not actually processing what they're saying because we're more in tune to figure out what are we trying to respond back. And most of the time when that person is talking to us, if it's something that we don't like, we already thinking about what we're going to say, whether it be rude or whether it be something peaceful. And just being around children and being around adults, kids are mean by nature. Kids say things that they really don't mean, but then they come back like nothing has never, ever happened. And just being around kids and being a parent and speaking to my own kids, when you're telling them something, they're not even processing what you're telling them because they're trying to figure out what their response is going to be back. And Pastor Baines the other day told one of my children, he said, you know, you didn't give Papa nothing for his birthday. And before, she can even, before he could even say anything back, she said, yes, I did, Papa. I gave you myself. So I was like, you didn't even process what he said. 
I was like, you were real quick to come back with a comeback. And that's how our tongue produces that life or death. Because we don't think before we speak. And we should be listening. We should be listening with our hearts so that we can respond accordingly. Sometimes you don't always have to respond rude. People can be very, very angry. You don't know what people have been through. And they come to you venting. And sometimes your mind can say, okay, I'm going to vent back at this person because they don't know what I'm going through. But sometimes if you just give them a peaceful answer, that's going to calm them down just by you giving because they wasn't expecting that. They're expecting you to rebuttal. They're expecting you to argue. That's just people nature. They're expecting us to argue and get back with it. But most of the time, we need to share peaceful words. We need to be peaceful. Now, looking at the scripture, I have... When you're looking at, hold on, in Proverbs 18 and 21, let me go back, hold on, there we go. Um, death and life, death and life are in the power of the tongue. The tongue, the tongue is a muscle. The tongue is as capable of producing force as a leg or even the jaw, but its power it's measured by the damage it can do to life and it can bring. In any translation, the tongue is mentioned well over a hundred times in the Bible. We should take great care of the words that we pr produce. And then also in 21, it says that it has the power of life and death. One way that Jesus revealed is as the word made flesh. Words themselves are powerful. God spoke the world into being. He spoke death and judgment into the fall. As his image barriers, humans also have power in their words. It takes words to bless someone, a powerful and life-giving act. And it takes words to curse someone, bringing death. In other ways, an unbridled tongue can be damaging or through lies, gossip, profanity, and venting anger. And then another, the third point in that 21st verse, it says, and those who love it will eat of its fruits. This could be seen as those who enjoy talking a lot. It could also refer to those who respect power of the tongue. But the former is more likely because even those who do not respect the power of the tongue will eat the bitter fruit produced by talking long before one's character has developed for the better. A person can avoid a world of trouble by minding his tongue, difficult though this may be. So even though sometimes it's hard to control what comes out of our mouth, because most of the time we speak before we think about it. And then once we say something, we feel like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Or, oh, I could have said this, but it's too late. It's already come out your mouth. You can't take it back. You can apologize for it, but you can't necessarily take back what you said. So we always need to remember that the words we speak can produce life. If you go back to Genesis in the beginning, God just spoke and things happened. God said, let there be light. The lights came on. He said, let's make man in our image. He created man. All God did was spoke. Your words are very powerful. They can speak life and they can speak death. And I know as being people, <laughs> people come to us and say some things that are rude. And I know in your mind you be thinking some rude things. You be thinking that bad things to happen to this person. That's like speaking it. Even though you don't say it when your mind says it, it's just like speaking it. So we need to be careful to speak. We need to be quick to listen and process so that what comes out of the mouth can, I, can actually bless someone. It can be peaceful. We don't want to curse anyone because people are quick to say, and you call yourself a Christian. What does that have to do with it? We're still human. We still make mistakes. We still sin just like you sin. Even though your sin may be harsh as what other people say, a sin is a sin. Whether it's picking up a penny that didn't belong to you or whether it's doing drugs, getting drunk, shooting somebody, a sin is a sin. So we need to realize the things that we do and the things that we say can actually hurt someone. And even though you may not physically when it says life and death, even though you may not physically kill someone with your words, that hurt is the same thing. Because you're, you're, um, you're not being kind. You're not building a person up. You should be one that build people up. And that's, one, that's what I always try to do. I try to build people up. I know I always think about others before I think about myself.
Okay, let me quit. Now I'm rumbling. Um, let me quit rumbling. Let me talk. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> Tongues have power and death. Proverbs 12 and 18. If you go to Proverbs, the 12th chapter and the 18th verse. Okay, Proverbs 12 and 18. It says, <clears throat> There is that speak it like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. When we are not careful with our tongues, our words are like stabbing someone in the heart with a sword. So make sure that the words that you speak are peaceful words, are words that are going to build people up. Because whether you say someone is ugly, or like my kids will be telling each other, Ooh, did you brush your teeth this morning? They be telling each other they breath speak. Those words are hurtful words to people. Even though we're saying it jokingly, those words can actually hurt someone. So you just need to watch what you say to people. Let's go to Psalms 55 and 21. Hope y'all remember what these Bible verses are. 50, Psalms 55 and 21. <clears throat> Here uh, it reads, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart, and his words were softer than oil, yet they drawn swords. Now I just told, I just said that we should be kind, but then what is our motive behind those kind words? Sometimes we pretend to be kind with our words, but we are being dishonest and are ready to harm others with our words. We're being flattering to people. Sometimes somebody can tell you something and somebody can <laughs> be doing something. You can, just like we say it all the time. <laughs> when a baby is born, you be like, oh, that baby is so cute. But in the back of your mind, you be thinking, that's an ugly baby. That baby looks <laughs> real ugly. <laughs> your words are not honest. I mean, it's, it's cute. <laughs> it's nice that people are having babies. But back in the back of your head, you're like, that baby really wasn't cute. <laughs> You know, those words are unkind words. You had good motives, but in the back of your mind, you was thinking something totally different, and y'all laughing because y'all did it too. I know, I know. <laughs> now, let's go to uh, Proverbs 15 and 1. Proverbs 15 and 1. It says, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous word stir up anger. When we choose harsh words, we stir up anger. So that's what I'm saying. When you have someone who's already anger and they're talking to you, instead of coming back at them with more anger, if you give them harsh words, I mean, if you, if you give them harsh words, y'all going to keep going back and forth. But if you tell them something nice in a lower tone, they're going to stop and think about it. And be like, wait a minute, that's not the response I was waiting on. And they're going to think about it, and that's pre pretty much going to get them quiet. That person probably going to get solid because they're ready to go back and forth with you, but from your response, you, they're going to be quiet. They don't have anything else to say to you. So we need to make sure that as we're going through our daily lives, that we need to make sure that we choose our words. Do you want your words to be speak life? Or do you want your words to speak death? I know I want my words to speak life. And this also goes with our kids. Even though we are not in school, we need to practice kind words. Practice being kind to others. And I'm not saying be soft and just let people push you over. Absolutely not. But choose your words wisely. Choose your tone wisely. I have to watch that myself. Because just being around people in general, even when you're at work, even when you're in the store right now, I know right now with, it, with Corona, the first time somebody coughed, everybody turned around looking, trying to, ooh, that, and, and you know if somebody coughed, what you thinking in the back of your head? They got Corona. But that's not, <laughs> that's not right, you know? Anytime somebody coughs or something, everybody's saying that person has Corona. My daughter read something that said made in China. She said, oh, mama, that got Corona on it because it was made in China. I was like, no, it does not. But we have to make sure that we are watching what we say. We have to, because people 
have different mind frames. And being children of God, we know right from wrong. We know how to think. We know how to turn, we know how to turn that wrath into, into niceness. You know, we know how to be kind. So we need to make sure that we're being an example. We need to make sure that we're setting example for others. Not just for kids, but you can set examples for adults too because you have people in this world that are not in the word as we are. And I encourage each of you to get in the word because the word is going to help us to make sure that our words are speaking life and not death. Because right now in this day and time with everything that's going on, we need our words to be speaking life and not death. And I'm almost done. Pastor Bain, let me up here choking. Can I get some water? No, I'm just kidding. I've always wanted to say that since I wasn't urchin. I just always want to ask Pastor Bain to bring me some water, but I really don't need none. Y'all quit laughing. Okay. Um, today, <laughs> make your mouth a fountain of life. And that's from Proverbs 10 and 11. Be slow to speak. In general, encourage more than you critique. Seek opportunities to speak kind, tender-hearted words. Say something affectionate to a loved one to an in an unexpected time. Seek to only speak words that are good for building up, that give grace to those who hear. Be a person whose mouth is full of life. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And that's in Acts 20 and 32. So I am pretty much almost done. I just want to encourage you to make sure that you're speaking life wherever you go. Just like where, wherever you walk, there should be life. People should see it in you. Even though you don't have a flashlight <laughs> that's flashing directly in front of you to let your light shine, people should see the light from your heart shining. They should see that life that's within you. Make sure that when and next time that somebody cuts you off on the road, Next time somebody um, run the red light or next time somebody do something to you, make sure that you think before you flip the bird at them, uh, before you cuss them out in your car because they cut you off or because they wouldn't let you over at the last minute when you needed to get over. Make sure you think about that because, y'all, I was driving one day and this man was trying to get in front of me. And I told him, come on and get in front of me. And when he got in front of me, we stopped at a light. And I kid y'all not, this man let his one down and cussed me out because he thought I flicked the bird at him. And I was just telling him to get in front of me. And he was all out of his car cussing me out. And I was just looking at him. And finally, I just let my wind up, turned my music up, and drove off. And everybody was looking at him, blowing at him. And he's still sitting there. The light done turned green and red again. He's still sitting at the light fussing. I don't know what was going through his mind, but... I was speaking life at that point, even though I wasn't physically talking to him, but because of my gestures, because of my actions, I was speaking life. Now, had I got back with him, it would have been a road rage situation. We would have been outside fighting. Somebody probably would have got killed, because at that time, I was packing. Everything would have went wrong. But I spoke life. So make sure that we're speaking life and not death, make sure that you are choosing your words wisely. Thank you and have a blessed evening. joining in with us tonight. Now we ask everyone to please stand. Father, we come before your presence with thanksgiving God from our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for protecting us. We thank you for being with us, God. We thank you for your spirit that dwells in us. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into our life, into our flesh. 
Thank you, Father, for your healing power, your delivering power. God, we lift up those that are requesting prayer tonight. Lord, we lift up Sister Pam, weary before you tonight. God, we pray your healing words that you sent to heal us will touch our body now in the name of Jesus, God, and the many ones who have asked for prayer. God, we declare and decree and speak forth your words that you sent to heal us, and that is be healed in the name of Jesus by the power of his spirit. And Father, we pray for every leader throughout this world, Lord, whether if they're in the White House or in the church house. We cover every leader in this world, in our education system, and everywhere. For God, even through this pandemic, we know that you are still in control because you are almighty God. And God, we know that you are watchful over your children. And we just thank you for that, Father. We thank you for giving us another opportunity. Thank you for saturating us with your love and with your forgiveness and with your joy and with your happiness, God. And we ask you to continue to watch over us and our children, Father. And God, for many of those during this time, God, that may have found it uh, not necessary to gather together, God, we pray for them right where they are at right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you, God, for the spirit that you have given us, Father. And we're praying for all of our brothers and sisters who have not gathered back together in the church house where the congregation meets god we know that we are the church we know that our bodies is the temple of the holy spirit and that he dwells in us but god we also cover in our brothers and sisters everywhere god throughout this world and we know that it's been appointed unto once man to die and after death comes the judgment so god we do believe according to your word god that when it's our time it's going to be our time. But, Father, we pray until then that you continue to strengthen us, God, and keep us strong and continue leading us, God, where we can continue the kingdom work that you have assigned us to. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And all the believers shout it. Amen. Amen.